Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin as well as some other cryptocurrencies and go through an exercise, something we've done a few times before on modern portfolio theory. We're going to talk about the Sharpe ratio, the Sortino ratio, how do you maximize your risk adjusted returns just simply based on historical data. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. And also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com, where you can, of course, get access to this tool uh, and um, plenty of other charts and, and tools as well. So we've done this video before, but it has been a while, and, and some of the percentages have slightly changed in the direction that if you go back and watch the prior videos that we suggested they were likely going to change into. And what we're doing here is we're first running a, a Monte Carlo simulation, right? So we're taking 50,000 different portfolio weights between just Bitcoin and Ethereum, and we're calculating out an expected return based on historical returns. Now, a lot of hedge funds use this sort of stuff, but in a slightly different way. For instance, they might use something different for the expected return rather than just simply looking at historical returns, right? Just because something played out a certain way in the past doesn't mean it's going to continue to play out like that. But it has been fairly useful through the years. And, and this is something we've talked about over the last few years. So, if, you know, if you're a hedge fund or something, your expected return might be something, you know, your your alpha, right? You're, you're something that you've decided it's actually worth this. This is what I think is going to happen. And based on where I think it's going to go, how do I maximize my risk adjusted returns? Because even if you think it's going to go to a certain level, you also want to look at its volatility and say, all right, well, I think it's going to go here, but there is still some level of risk involved. And in this way, we're sort of defining risk as the amount of volatility. And so here, what we're doing is we're displaying 5,000 of 50,000 portfolio simulations because it's just a lot to, to, you know, to, to visually show 50,000. But when you're only using two different assets, you just get a, you know, you get a, a simple curve that looks like this. Now, if you were to add in a third asset and recalculate it, then obviously it's, it's a little bit more complex. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But when you're just talking about two assets, Bitcoin and Ethereum, you get this line. Now, this line is known as the efficient frontier. So again, when you have three assets, you want to be on that efficient frontier. When you have two assets, it, there's no depth to it, right? You're either, you know, if you're 20% Bitcoin, that means you're 80% ETH. Or if you're 80% Bitcoin, that means you're 20% ETH. If you're looking at a portfolio of simply only consisting of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And so the way to interpret this is to say, all right, well, if your expected if your expected return is say 0.7 and the volatility is point and you're okay with say volatility of, of 75%, then your annual expected return would be 70% plus or minus 75%. And then that would lead you to a portfolio consisting of approximately 61% Bitcoin and 39% ETH. Now that portfolio is not the portfolio that maximizes your risk adjusted returns. In fact, the one that maximizes your Sharpe ratio is 76% Bitcoin and 24% ETH. However, I think the Sortino ratio might actually be a little bit more useful because the Sharpe ratio actually punishes positive volatility. If you remember earlier, we talked about volatility. We're thinking about volatility in terms of risk, right? Now, you might think, well, if, if, if the asset that I'm holding goes up 100%, that's not a bad thing. But if you're calculating out your Sharpe ratio, it'll just punish any type of volatility, right? And, and treat it as, as bad, right? Or treat it as risk. But if you want to only punish negative volatility, right? Where you get volatility to the downside, then you can actually stick to your Sortino ratio. And the Sortino ratio is maximized with a portfolio consisting of 80% Bitcoin and only 20% ETH. Now, this is something that I'm sure would be very controversial. But if you go back and look at these videos that I did on modern portfolio theory, say two years ago, 
the numbers were actually closer together. I don't remember exactly what it was. It might've been like 65% Bitcoin, 35% ETH. But back then, if you go watch all those videos, what I said was that I think it's actually going to be going more towards Bitcoin over the next few years. And so it's better to anticipate that rather than to wait for it to say 80%, right? Or 90% or whatever it's gonna say. And the reason I said that back then, I gotta work it in, is of course because of the view that we've expressed time and time again regarding the dominance of Bitcoin going up. And, and we've, we've seen that happen. And, and so because that has continued to, to, to play out, what essentially has happened is that the, you know, the, the, the allocation towards Bitcoin by percent has actually gone up and Ethereum has gone down. And if you think back a couple of years ago, a lot of people were saying, well, ETH outperforms Bitcoin in a bull run. I've been very clear that ETH outperforms Bitcoin in a QE bull run, but not in a QT bull run. In a QT bull run, just like 2019, Bitcoin outperforms Ethereum. And so that's why that's why you get this. So, I mean, I think a lot of people, they only remember that one year of QE, you know, from like 2020 to 2021, and they saw ETH outperform Bitcoin. So then they always think it's going to outperform it, when in reality, that's just simply not the case. And while it has been putting in higher lows, for a while, it's also been putting in lower highs. Perhaps it's converging to whatever the fair value is. Um, but again, the Sortino ratio is maximized by 80% Bitcoin, 20% ETH. The Sharp ratio is maximized by 76% Bitcoin, 24% ETH. And your Sharp ratio, your, your Sortino ratio max is 1.119. Your Sharp ratio max is 0.925. You want it to be as high as possible, okay? And, and this is just something going back to 2015 because you can only go back as far as the youngest asset, right? You can't use Bitcoin price history from 2011 because Ethereum didn't exist back then. Um, so then what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, what, what if you're super risk averse, right? What if you're like, you don't want hardly any volatility, but you still want to hold Bitcoin and ETH. Then you want to look at how do you minimize your volatility, Right. So rather than maximize your sharp ratio or your Sortino ratio, maybe you're super risk averse and you'd rather minimize your volatility so that you can sleep better at night. And in that case, it would call for 93 percent Bitcoin and 7 percent ETH. Right now, for me, I've obviously been even more weighted towards Bitcoin over the last couple of years, just simply because I thought Bitcoin dominance would go up and that the valuation of ETH would bleed against Bitcoin until we get back to looser monetary policy. And I am very happy with that decision. Obviously, if you bought ETH at $1,000, it's not like you're hurting, let's be real. But I do think it, it goes to show why Bitcoin has, in fact, been the better play. Now, what we can do, though, is we can add a little bit more depth to this chart. One thing that I'm sure is on everyone's mind right now, before we get to that, is how do we know that this is the actual max Sortino ratio and sharp ratio because we only ran 50,000 simulations. Is it not possible that if we had run 50,001 simulations, maybe we would have found a portfolio with a higher expected return? We've, ac we've accounted for that, right? And so there's actually this cool thing you can do um, with, with this. I mean, you can run the Monte Carlo simulation and try to brute force it, or you can resort to quadratic programming and if you do that, you can identically solve for the portfolio that maximizes your sharp ratio and your Sortino ratio. So you don't even have to rely on a brute force Monte Carlo approach. If we add in an asset, let's say Litecoin. I always like to pick on Litecoin because it, it just keeps on bleeding back to Bitcoin. It's what it does best. Now there's depth, right? And as you hover over these different portfolios, you can see how the portfolio percentages change. And when you're down here at your max Sortino ratio, and sharp ratios, you can see how it calls for a very heavy allocation in Bitcoin, much smaller in ETH, and practically zero in Litecoin. As you go up the efficient frontier, you can see how it goes from less, it goes from a lot of Bitcoin to less Bitcoin and more ETH. And the reason for that is because, you know, ETH, while it has been underperforming Bitcoin, when it does move, especially when QE returns, it actually does tend to outperform Bitcoin. And so, you know, you could get a higher return with ETH but you're also paying for it with a lot more volatility, especially over like the last three years where you've actually seen ETH underperform Bitcoin. So in that case, the people that were 100% ETH took on more risk than Bitcoin and they got a lower return, which is what you really want to avoid. Now, you also can go down here as sort of the red line and you might think of that even as the inefficient frontier. And that's where you really don't wanna be, 
right? You're taking on a ton of risk and you're getting a, you're expecting a lower return. For instance, up here at say volatility at 0.8 on the efficient frontier, your expected return is about 70%. And that's you're, there, there you're about 52% Bitcoin, 48% ETH. But if you go all the way down here to the inefficient front, it's not, inefficient frontier is not really a thing. I'm just sort of making it up, I believe. Um, maybe someone's used that before. There it calls for, say, 43% Bitcoin, 3% ETH, and like 54% Litecoin. But 54% Litecoin is really going to get you anywhere in, in the cryptoverse. And you can see that in this case, you're taking on the same amount of risk as you were up here, but your return is, you know, 30 to 40% less, theoretically, just based on historical returns. And so in this case, to maximize your Sortino ratio, it calls for 78% Bitcoin and 22% and ETH, right? And, and again, for your Sharp ratio, it's about 76% Bitcoin and 24% ETH. Um, so it, it is interesting how these, how, how sort of the numbers subtly change, right? Especially when you're talking about your, your Sortino ratio, right? So if you go back to just your Bitcoin and ETH chart, um, you can see it, it really doesn't change, right? It's still 76%, 24% for the Sharp ratio. And the reason it doesn't change is because we're just using quadratic programming to identically solve for the, the, the valuation or the, the, the portfolio weights that maximize your risk adjusted return, which is the Sharp ratio, okay? So you can add on Litecoin and, and see that it, it, it really doesn't, it doesn't make a difference because it's saying, you know what, you can add Litecoin all you want. It's not that Litecoin can't go up, right? But guess what? Even if it does go up, Bitcoin and Ethereum likely outperformed it, right? There's not many, if you think about, you know, uh, if we live in a multiverse and there's like thousands of other universes, like how many of those do you have a, an example where Litecoin goes up a lot and Bitcoin and Ethereum aren't also doing well, right? So it's, it's not to say that Litecoin can't do well, it's just that there's some opportunity cost. There's a lot of opportunity costs associated with it. Now, you can also add on some other uh, altcoins as well. Let's add in XRP and Monero. And I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. You're like, well, why is he using all these relics? You know, why is he using all these coins from prior cycles that no one cares about, right? The reality is, is that you, you really can't use assets that have only been around for like one market cycle because they just skew the results. And the reality is in the first market cycle, an altcoin can do quite well. In the second and third, it oftentimes a lot of them underperform. Some of them will continue to do well in later cycles, but there's just so many of them that underperform later on. And, and you just have to be aware of that. So in this case, you can still see that to maximize your Sharp ratio, it's still just 76% Bitcoin, 24% ETH, and it's 0% everything else, right? And it's not to say that other stuff, that other stuff can't go up. It's just to say, look, if it goes up, it's only because Bitcoin went up, right? Uh, so it really does go to show that, that, it, that you know, a, a sort of an interesting view of the market. Now, we've added something to this that we haven't shown before, and that's we're going to add in USD, right? So if you're, if you're someone like me who likes to have some cash on hand in case you get dips, in case, in case this does play out, like a mid 2019 style thing where all Bitcoin pairs are breaking down and the Bitcoin dominance is breaking out. If it does play out like that, then, you know, it makes sense, right, to have some cash on hand, right? Especially, you know, when you do see the market sort of fall back in for a while, for whatever reason it might be. And in this case, to maximize your Sortino ratio, it's 66% Bitcoin, 17% ETH, 17% USD, right? To maximize your Sharp ratio, it's 51% Bitcoin, 16% ETH, 33% USD. And by the way, the USD, I'm not, we're not even including, you know, your 5% returns on USD. I mean, if, if you threw in, if you threw in the risk-free rate, you know, if you threw in something like the two-year yields and said, well, I can at least get 5% risk-free on that, then it, then it might actually change the calculation, right? Um, but in this case, we're not doing that. We're just saying, you know, it just is one, right? And it just doesn't move. And in that case, you're still looking at about 33%. But in order to minimize your volatility, obviously, it would just be 100% USD because there's like there's no volatility in the sense that everything is being denominated in US dollars. Now, we know if you're in crypto, you know that's not entirely true, right? While it might be true that one US dollar equals one US dollar, we know that the dollar is being devalued, right? Is There's no such thing as like the sort of the perfect reference point. Even if you're measuring like, you know, speed or like velocity, right? It's, it's always relative to what, right? I mean, like, like I'm sitting here and I'm not moving, but 
relative to the sun I'm moving and relative to the Milky Way, the, you know, our solar system is moving and relative to the Milky Way, right? Everything's moving with respect to something else. And so you can't just look at USD in the vacuum and say that it's always just, I mean, yes, it's true that one US dollar equals one US dollar, but the purchasing power goes down. Um, so of course, if you wanted to minimize your volatility, that's what you would go with, but you're, you're going to lose purchasing power over a long period of time. And so this is a really interesting way, I think, to look at, at this stuff and to try to figure out you know, what makes the most amount of sense, how much risk do you want to take on at various parts in the cycle. And the thing I love about this, this type of chart is there's no bias in it, right? It just, it, it's something that dates back, dates back several decades, classical portfolio theory, right? There's papers on it. You can read them. Go to Google Scholar and just type in modern portfolio theory. And there's no bias to it. It's just like, you know, I'm just, we're just plugging in historical returns as the expected return, which, I mean, it's a bit dubious, right? But that's what we do here. You know, we're looking at prior volatility, plugging that in and just saying, you know what, based on historical results, this is what we expect, we would expect annually. That doesn't mean that some years you're not going to have a bad return. Again, even when you're maximizing your sharp ratio, your expected return between these three things is about 50% plus or minus 50%, right? I mean, so some years within one standard deviation, you're not going to get a return at all. And then some years you, you might lose money right? But this is modern portfolio theory. I thought this would be a good way to just sort of show people the different strategies. Because, you know, there's a lot of people out there that'll, that'll just say, you know, this is how you manage your risk, right? They'll, you know, they'll, 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 they'll talk about um, like sort of the technical analysis levels, which I'm not saying there's no validity to that. But th there's another way to, to approach the markets, right? Than, than the TA way. And it's just to say, look, what if we approach this from something that was developed decades ago that has worked out pretty well for other people. And we just apply it to crypto, right? It's as simple as that. And this is a way that you can go about doing that and, and leaving the bias at the door. Now you can add a bias to it, right? And the way you could do that is you could, you know, program in instead of using the expected return based on historical returns, you could make your expected return based on what you think the return is going to be. So like if you think Bitcoin's going to go up say 30% or something, then you could plug that in and then it would tell, well, I mean, not on this right now, like we don't have that capability right now, but theoretically, if you just programmed it yourself, I mean, you can do all this in, in, in Python. The first time I, I did all this, I just coded it up in Anaconda. My point is, is that is something you could theoretically do, plug it in what you think Bitcoin's gonna do, what you think ETH is gonna do. And then based on historical volatility, you could then figure out what weights would make the most amount of sense. And you could also be the person that says, you know what? I don't want to maximize my risk adjusted return. Maybe you want to minimize volatility um, with these two assets or something, right? And, and so there's different ways, right? And there's no, there's no right or wrong answer. It, it's just what is the risk you're willing to take on? The, you know, the 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 more degen friends among us, they might want to be all the way out here on the risk on the on the risk curve at at really high volatility, you know, over a hundred percent annualized volatility. And they barely have any Bitcoin and they're just loaded up on ETH. Now, that strategy has not been working out for them in the way that they might have hoped over the last few years. They would have been better off with 100. They would have been better off over here, right, with 100 percent Bitcoin and 0 percent ETH over the last few years because the ETH Bitcoin valuation has bled quite a lot. But look, they knew the risk. They took on the risk. It didn't pay off. It might pay off next year. Maybe it'll pay off at some point. But again, with investing, timing is everything. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com, where you can, of course, get access to this tool. That'll wrap it up, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.